What up, it's your boy, Sintel Mangala, the Reverend of the Revolution. Welcome to your Daily Revolution. Today's topic, how to deal with chargeback Chuck. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. It's a beautiful, sunny day here in Southern California. Blue skies, a little bit chilly, and I'm sitting in my vehicle to do this podcast. So, for those of you who think, oh my gosh, I need a studio, and I need a mic, and I, look, I, I'm sitting here speaking into my telephone. I shoot it up to my team, and they do the podcast. So I just want to let you know, you don't need expensive mics, you don't need filters, you just need to have courage. So, today's topic is how to deal with the chargeback chuck. I had an incident that happened to me. In the last two weeks, let me go back to uh, September, October. I had a client named Chuck. Chuck comes in and signs a contract to work with us. Chuck's heart is touched. He wants to do right by his business, by his life. And so Chuck signs up in the end of October. We get on a number of phone calls. We do what we do. Look, I'm a coach, right? We do what we do as coaches. We coach, we train, we speak, we teach. We hold people accountable. Like we have incredible, powerful, insightful conversations. And sometimes it's just one conversation that leads to six or seven figure deals. And in the last couple of weeks, Chuck decided that Chuck no longer wanted to honor the contract. Contract was significant. And Chuck had paid us some money. The amount was about $10,000. And it was challenging because when I first started to see the chargebacks come through, a chargeback is where they just don't tell their credit card company, uh, these guys didn't fulfill. And that hurts me. It hurt more than the money. It really hurt me because I take so much pride in the work that we do. I take so much pride in my name, my reputation, what we do as an organization, as a coaching firm. So I reached out to Chuck and I'm like, hey, let's have a conversation. Let's get on the phone. And Chuck wouldn't speak with me. Now I start to get angry. And then I like, you know, Chuck, are you open? And then I give Chuck some words of coaching just to help Chuck see something. Well, this isn't about Chuck. This is about who? This is about Satema. Because there is a beautiful divine lesson here. If Satema was willing to be open and, and if Satema was willing to learn the lesson. So about two weeks go by, $10,000 comes out of my bank account. And look, it's, it's a lot of money and it's not a lot of money, right? Just hear me, it's relative. So I go talk to my attorney and I'm telling my attorney and we get on the phone with another attorney and they tell me what I can do. And, you know, I'm like, I got a contract here and Chuck owes us a significant amount of money based upon the contract that was signed and based upon the work that we've already done. You know, I, I'm a coach. So it's not like we're giving someone a widget, like we're putting our heart, our soul, our energy, our time and energy. Well, I was getting ready to go after Chuck. I was like, you know what? I just came out of a lawsuit. I'm going to sue Chuck. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna, I will spend up to X amount of dollars just to show Chuck. <laughs> and I was in anger. I was just angry. And I go to church on Sunday. And we pray with my sons. And I look at my sons in the morning and in the evening and in the car. And I'm always counseling and coaching my sons. And I feel like God was whispering to me saying, Satema, son, <laughs> no, you let this go. And so a few days ago, I shot Chuck a message and I said, Chuck, you know, keep the money. It's yours. God bless you. Best in all your endeavors. I have zero hard feelings. Take care. And that's the truth. See, in the beginning, I was angry. I was Bitterness was taking over me, like Venom, right? In Spider-Man, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie, but there's this Spider-Man and Venom, this black goo, and it, and it loves negativity, and it loves anger. And it, it got me for a couple of days to the point where I was talking to an attorney, and I was saying some not-so-nice words out of my mouth, some very colorful metaphor, um, you know, but like the prodigal son in the New Testament, I came to myself. And I'll tell you right now, like, if you learn how to listen to the voice and learn how to live by correct principles and learn to just let go of the checks in your life. Like I have zero, zero ill feelings. And I did a while ago for Chuck, but today I have zero ill feelings. Like, there's just a piece of me that's just like, look, what, you know, look, Chuck must have really needed the money to, to take advantage of our firm, to, to do what we do, and then to just not even talk to me, right? Not even get coaching and figure a way out of this. And the, the big lesson here is number one, let go of the things that are costing you. 
Sure, could I have hired my attorney? Could we have gone after Chuck? Absolutely. Did we have a right to? Yeah, we had a contract. But I would have been wrong because it would have cost me. It cost me emotionally. It cost me energetically. And that would have affected my ability to, to lead with vision, with power as a husband, as a father, as a business owner, as the CEO of my company. So number one, let go. Like where in your life today are you still holding on to Chuck because, well, I'm right. You know, and look, I was right with Chuck. But where are you still holding on to this in your life today? You got to let go, right? Like there's a movie called Frozen. Let it go. You got to let that go. Let it go. So I let it go. And the immediate peace that I felt was just incredible. Now, you know, I put this on my Facebook page and it's incredible, right? It, for me, it's about impacting. It's about teaching. It's about making a difference for people and using my life's experiences as just lessons that can be learned. And a, a good friend of mine, Brother Dan, said this. He said, life is what we build ourselves to be. Um, and, look, and look, it's powerful. I get to learn from other perspectives. Principle number two is perspective creates possibilities. So again, where in your life today do you still think that you are owed or that because you are, quote, right, that you need to pursue down this path? Now, are there going to be times where I may have to go do, do a lawsuit? Sure, but that's not this time because the voice is telling me. So number one, let go of Chuck. Number two, listen to the voice. I, I felt it like anger had me do some one thing, but love and the voice had me do something different. Now, here, here's what I mean by this. The voice is telling you to do something. I know it is, and you know it is too. Some of you aren't even in tune. You're not even in the frequency because of the way you're living your life. You're dishonest. You're unkind. You gossip. You don't take care of yourself. You stay up too late looking at your computer or your cell phones, looking at things you shouldn't be looking at, or you uh, you're like re you treat your family with a lot of disrespect. Get your life right. Get your mind right. and Get back into frequency so the voice can speak to you. And if the voice tells you something to do, you got to do it. Like that's the second lesson here. Listen to the voice. I, I listened, and I promise you, you know, like when ten thousand dollars comes out of a bank account, you're like, geez, Louise, man, that just hurts. And it's amazing what happened. I knew if I could just let this go and listen, we'd just go make more money, and that's what we do. We did. You know, it's like let's go. And the third thing, the third lesson is that within every challenge or adversity or event, in every event, there is a divine gift. There's a divine lesson. There's more than one, but there's a divine gift and a divine lesson. And I'll tell you right now, the divine lesson gift for me is we just looked at what we were doing as an organization. We we're like, how do we prevent this from happening again? How do we button up and tie down and really solidify the processes of our business? It's been incredible. So instead of getting mad, instead of getting bitter, instead of letting anger consume me and slow down my production, my ability to learn and to grow and to impact other people and to lead my company and to lead my clients and to lead my family, instead of letting anger and jealousy and bitterness and, and entitlement get in the way, I just let it go. Listen to the voice. I have nothing about it. And then when I say nothing, I mean that. Like there's just, I'm like, I'm so grateful. I'm like, thank you, Chuck. Thank you for blessing my life. Thank you for giving me an opportunity. And yeah, is it costly and is it, is it a lot of money? Yes and no, right? It's relative. And we're going to be better as an organization because of what Chuck did. Now, what does this mean for you in your life today, inside of your physical world, your spiritual world, your relational world, or your financial world, and or all four of the big four? What can you do to look at what's going on and learn from it? Can you truly learn the lessons? You know, I love what Conor McGregor said some time ago when he lost to Nate Diaz in MMA. <clears throat> and Conor McGregor was a fighter. And he lost. And I just love the way he responded. He's like, you know, I, I don't lose. I just learn. And it really only is losing if you don't get back up and you don't learn. So thank you, Chuck. If you got a Chuck in your life, go handle it. All right, go, go move on. Go listen to the voice. Let it go. Stop being angry. Stop being bitter. Don't get bitter. Just get better. Get stronger. Because this is a long game of eternal expansion, value creation. This is a long game of prosperity for those who choose to live in this prosperity revolution. I love you. I'm out. For more info on joining the revolution and living your greatest life of prosperity today, go to www.yourdailyrevolution.com and join us in waking up, turning your brain on, and prospering today.